Hey, rock stars, I'm JB, expert salesperson and master presenter. I'm the doctor, psychologist, and behavioral expert. This is the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab Podcast. We're high-performance coaches that help service-based professionals and entrepreneurs take their skills to the next level. 70% of entrepreneurs fail, which is why every week we have real talk with real entrepreneurs to help ensure you are not one of them. We're also the inventors of the Be Rich Mindset. Where we rise to mastery, inspire greatness, celebrate knowledge, and help others along the way. So join us in the lab. And now, on to the show. Doc Doc Coos, what's up, buddy? Welcome back to the lab, everybody. What's going on, JB? Man, I'm excited. End of the year. My favorite time of the year here in sunny Florida. It's cool enough that I can actually enjoy my outdoor workout. So I am I'm happy as a pig and shit, dude. It's been over uh, a month and a half at this point, and I'm still not adjusted to the time change. <laughs> I think you just like sleeping in. Who are you kidding? Well, that's the problem is I can't. It gets light now. And when I'm when I want to stay up and get stuff done, I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, ah, oh, it's almost bedtime and it says 630. I don't know what to do with that. You just you just you're going to bed too early, man. You're a night owl. Why do you care if it's dark out? You love it when it's dark it just out. It throws me off. It just throws me off. Whatever. Uh, hey, if you are March, I counted down March. March, March is when we get it back. <laughs> It'll be better off if we just never had the time change in general. But I mean, it, it, it's in the past, dude. It was a month and a half ago. You just got to get over it. Come on. Let, let me vent. Yeah. So the people understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They do. But maybe not. This could be their first time listening. So if you are a new listener, I swear we just don't talk about the time change from a couple months ago here. This is the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab. First of all, thank you for joining us if you're a first time listener. Uh, listen into the episode Real Talk with Real Professionals every single week. You like what you hear and what you see. Follow us, subscribe, give us a five star review. We do this for you. If you have listened in before, you're joining us again. A, thank you very much. B, I'm going to assume you've gone ahead and you've already done that like, follow, subscribe, and review. But if you haven't, come on, get off your asses and do it for us. We appreciate it. We do this for you. We try to get together some great insight, wisdom, and resources so you can get a little bit better every day at what you do and have an easier time of it. And that's our goal. So, like, follow, subscribe. Really excited to be here another week and move it into a new year. Stop being a slacker. Stop your ass. <laughs> so, Doc, I'm pumped. we got another great guest this week, as we do most weeks. We've got Mr. Austin Bergman, who is a realist and a real estate mogul and happens to be a good friend of ours both. Austin, welcome to the lab, man. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, so, so do our audience a favor, explain kind of who you are, what you do, and you're probably going to have to explain what it means to be a realist, because I don't think most people are going to know what that means. Well, everybody thinks a realtor hides shit. I just say it like it is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't sugarcoat in this business. Uh, let's see. I've been in this business for, I'm going on my 20th year. It's the only thing I've ever done. I took a year into culinary school, realized they didn't start cooking to the second year. So I dropped out of it and then bought my first house when I was uh, I think 18 years old. And that's kind of what folded me into real estate in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I started selling homes before I could buy alcohol for my clients, which was kind of embarrassing, but you know, it is what it is. And that was the height of boom. Uh, once we were got into that, uh, I had met my future wife and we had started a brokerage and it kind of took off. We were like the Barbie and Ken selling real estate in Richmond, Virginia. So that's how I got started in this industry. Which one of you had the pink Corvette? Uh, I didn't have a pink Corvette, but I did have a red ladybug that was our currying car that <laughs> curried stuff all over the place. <laughs> I don't remember that in the Barbie place. Yet, but... So, so, so funny. Funny. You're, you're the first one to even say that to me because I've said Barbie and Ken forever and nobody has said who had the pink Corvette, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> Nobody's as original as the doc. Right. I, I totally missed it. I thought I was like, we're not talking about Mary Kay here. <laughs> It's not smelling cosmetics. <laughs> it's awesome, man. So 18, you, you started buying and selling houses for people, 18, 19 years old. Yes. Wow. It, when it, it was pretty wild. And it was the height of the, the boom. So we literally could sit in the parking lot of our real estate company that we worked for at the time. And if people would drive up, you could sell them a house. So when was it? It was about 2006. We started our own brokerage because we were so good at it that we were out selling everybody we were like the two youngest cutest kids out there so we started our own company called valentine properties out of richmond virginia 
And over the years of 17 years, that spanned it out to be the number two brokerage in Richmond, Virginia. We had a boatload of agents, a boatload of offices, and it was it was a good ride. And so when did you, because you're down here in South Florida now, um, when did you, and you, you're not running a brokerage, right? Not, not anymore. Now, now you're just, what's the story I, there? Uh, well, I, running the brokerage, I was married for a while. The, the, I was hiding the fact that I was gay. So it was very hard. And the older, older I got, uh, it was hard to hold all that in. So she knew about it. We talked about it, but the business was too good. We were the face of Richmond real estate. So it was hard to hide anything. Um, and the older and older I got, the harder and harder it was for me to hold it in. So I guess it was October of 17. I had had enough of this and we both we filed for divorce and I um, pretty much was pushed out of the company. I wouldn't say I was fired, but I was pushed out of the company and had the opportunity to hit a reset button. So I came down here to South Florida to not be the hamster on a wheel. See, in Richmond, Virginia, the average sales price is 350000 and we would sell 500 homes a year between my ex-wife and myself. So I was constantly a hamster on a wheel all day long. It was go, 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 go. So when I moved down here, I was like, wow, the average sales price here is a million, a million, two. So if I focus on all that, I can give more quality service and it's more quality business and not having to be a hamster on a wheel all day long. Yeah, get out of that rat race. I I I totally get it. Uh, so you know, let, let's 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 kind of hit on this a little bit because I, I think this is important, right? You started out 18, 19 years old. You were incredibly successful for, for your wife. You weren't living authentically, and like today, it's a big it's a big buzzword. You know, being authentic. You had success without being authentic, right? So, at what point was that just like not enough? Because obviously, like success, just purely making money, wasn't enough for you. It was more go, I think the way I hit it now, since I look back, it's more go, 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 go. I mean, I was making a million dollars by the time I was 21 years old and it was, and then it went to 2 million and then it went to 3 million. And then it was just like, when the hell is enough enough? But when you've got a full staff at home, taking care of your home stuff, a private car out front waiting on you and you fly around a private aircraft that I was the pilot of. And it's just like, why would you end this? But deep down inside, it was like, it was burning me alive. And there were things that I did. There were drugs that I did that i hid that there was alcohol abuse and the verbal and physical abuse. And that was the worst part about all of it. So by the time that it was all over with, I'm like, I'm done with this shit. I need to move on and be myself, be authentic. And I don't drink as much as I used to. I don't do anything else. And you can love differently. That's the coolest part because now since I've, I've been with David now for three years, ever since stuff broke up and I, I can love differently than I loved other. And I feel it. It's so weird. That, that's <laughs> no, 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 dude. That, that that's 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 a powerful thing. There's there's a, there's a lesson here, right? So many people chase money, right? It's, yeah. it's so many people are out there chasing money. You had all the money in the world, and you know we hear this, but the, you know you got to hear it over and over again. Just having money is not gonna it's not gonna fill some sort of if, if you've got a void and and you're at if you are at odds with who you are, I don't care how much money you have. It's not it's not gonna fix that, right? Money is not gonna change that fact that you've got this big you know schism inside right that that like this is not who i am you, you know i don't know that you know authenticity you do get this buzz word around it but like you know it it's not that you need to be authentic to make money but i think if you want to really be satisfied and have fulfillment in your life and what you're doing you've got to be authentic you got to really kind of own yourself and it seems like that you gonna, figure that out if you're going to sell anything you have to do that authentically you can't have a wolf at home that is driving you up the wall and go try to sell somebody a product because that wolf is going to get in the middle of that transaction some way or the other. And I heard it multiple times, Austin, you are a freaking asshole. And that was because I had something hiding at home that I was not happy with. Yeah. And it's just, it's the honest to God truth about, I mean, yes, I did a lot of business because I didn't care if Somebody said that I was an asshole because there was always somebody coming through the door again. But now, since I look back on it all, it's all because that was hiding that at home. I think that's also the, the misconception, as we've probably said a million times now in 60 something episodes. Uh, we're all different. You know, we're all unique and not one size fits all. Um, but there is some things that are similar amongst us. And I think you can do those things, right? You can be an asshole and and be successful, but to what end? 
And if you're not the person that wants to do that, you're going to be at that battle all the time. There's some people that are just assholes and they're kind they're okay with it. Right. And they, 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 they thrive on that. Um, but if that's not who you are at your core and you're doing something that's opposite to what you believe truly, you're never going to be satisfied. And I think that's the big difference I'm hearing from you is that wasn't really you at the core. You just never had a chance to explore your real core until you did. And then that, then it wasn't okay to be the asshole. And now I love it. I mean, I love being an asshole, but <laughs> I love living in my core. Right. And that, that takes away the asshole mostly. It takes, it does instantly gone. I mean, it's instantly gone. Do we get a bonus for every time we say asshole in this episode, though? Because that'd be like the ding word on the side, like a, a bonus. I didn't know we, we were cursing here. I have this thing saying no cursing, but whatever. <laughs> Do you have a thing that says no cursing? No, it's on my computer screen. <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Sorry. <laughs> it is real talk with real professionals. I mean, <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> but I mean, growing that business with her, I mean, anybody that's growing a business, you've got to have a partner that you see eye to eye. And when shit hit the fan, it was, it, I was pushed out of it all. So it, for the, all the entrepreneurs that are listening to this, you guys need to have an exit plan, a legal written out exit plan with any, any business partner you're with. And I came up with a funny phrase after the fact of all this was never have as a business partner that you're not already sleeping with. Cause in the long run, they will you. And if you think about that again, it's kind of pretty, you've got to be with, don't ever have a business partner unless you've got a plan in place. Cause I did not have an exit plan in place with her. And that's why I was kind of pushed out of it. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I'm sure there's room for a joke on who, who's the big spoon and who's the little spoon here with me in the dock and our, in our marriage. Right. I always joke that he's my second wife. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's true. It's like a marriage. Uh, and there is something to be said about the business planning. A lot of a lot of people overlook the importance of a, a business plan and working with attorneys when you when you set up a business uh, and the partnership agreement. You know how you're going to handle challenges when they come. How you're going to part ways if it comes to that. Pretty important to set up early in a relationship. Tough conversation to have, maybe, but important to set up. It is because everybody. I mean, you work more than I do. You save more. I don't know. It, it always turns into an argument. I don't care any way you slice it. It's just, it happens. Talk about good communication. I think that's uh, that's always that's something lacking once you have that that disconnect start to happen. The, con- the communication starts to falter as well. And you, you notice yeah. that kind of goes hand in hand. So would you, do you have a partner now, Austin? Or would you have a partner again since you've had one? Or have you kind of, you know, some people will swear against partnerships. So they'll just say it'll never work. It can never work. Nobody ever puts in 50-50 equally or 100-100. I'm just kind of curious about your feelings on that, having been through a, for a time, a successful partnership. I mean, starting from a baby agent to somebody that managed agents to managing offices, I don't think I ever want to go back to managing a brokerage again. That is a full-time babysitting job. And um, I think where I am now, I, I mean, my average sales price now is about 2 million and that's where I just want to keep it. I sell high-end luxury stuff to entrepreneurs all over the place. They all have second homes here and I can jive with them just because I've, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I've been in business my whole life. So, I mean, from a humongous power attorney down to the guy that owns the largest AC company in Florida that was the high school dropout. They're some of my best clients. And it's like, I can jive with, and that's what I think I want to do from now on. I want to just focus on the high-end stuff, the waterfront properties. And I don't want to go back to being on a team. Well, I'm on a team now, but I don't want to be head of a team of an office, head of managing anything anymore. So no. It's important to know what you don't want, isn't it? You know, as, as much as it's important to know what you want, it's important to know what you don't want. If you've been there, done that, it's not for you. And, and managing people is a, I think it, it takes a certain personality to do it and do it well. I, I think out of the two of us, Doc's probably better at that stuff than I am. Tad bit. Well, I mean, there's 75,000 realtors down here and just half of them have no clue how to spell realtor. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I did hear you say, and uh, we say a lot here is, and is life is a trial and error. Like that's how I kind of describe life as being a big experiment. And every day we're running a new, a new version of that experiment. We're taking our hypothesis of what's supposed to happen and we're testing it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But each time we run a new iteration, we learn a little bit more about what we want and what we don't want to run in that experiment and which works and what doesn't work. And that's kind of what I heard you say there where you're like, I've done the team stuff. I've run the, I ran that experiment. It was successful, 
but I also realized that's not the experiment that I want to continue running. I want to test something else out and try something new. And that's what we do in life is keep making those adjustments on the path to keep finding what, what, what gels with us more and more. Yeah. And that's just how you become yourself. I mean, if, if people don't start in a little company and move all the way up to CEO, I mean, you've got to figure out what you want, what you don't want, and you'll eventually get there if you work for the person long enough, but you've got to put in your time. And after I've been really what I, I put in my time and then with me, not really losing it all, but having it all taken from me, it was like, here I am to start over again. Do I really want to do that? Absolutely not. You already did that experiment. Try a new one. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about the, the higher end because you, you went from volume. You went from, you know, you said 500 transactions per, per year, the two of us, which I know is monster. And if anybody's listening in that doesn't know the real estate market, I mean, those are monster freaking numbers. Those are huge numbers. Um, you're now, you're now focused on a much higher end market, bigger ticket items, obviously very different business model. Uh, you're enjoying it more clearly because you're continuing to move into that space and really owning that space. Uh, anything that you can share with our audience, just from your experience on, on how it's, a, how it's different from the volume model and the biggest changes you've made in how you run your business there. There's a, yes, it, you've got to start hanging around with those type of people. And that's what I learned when I came here. It wasn't, you can't hang around the average person because they only know the average person. If you want to move up into a higher price bracket, if you're a realtor listening to this, you've got to hang out with the people that own those type of homes. And all you need is one or two of them because they all know each other. Wealth knows wealth. And big wealth knows big wealth. I mean, one of our best friends is, it's probably the wealthiest person that I've ever known in my life. And we had dinner with him once or twice a week. And he's a 78 year old man has nothing else to do. Cause he's, <laughs> but he's, and he's cool. And I just do it for knowledge. I mean, that's somebody y'all should have on the podcast, but I'll ask him before I introduce you to him. But, um, no, but you just got to hang out with those people. And it's like I, going back to that. It was the more the family model that we had in Richmond, where it was the first time home buyers and the move up buyers. So it was the whole family model where you're at throwing things at the kids' basketball games, throwing things for families to come to. Now it's a different story. I mean, I just threw an event a couple of weeks ago at uh, the venue in Fort Lauderdale on this book launch, and I had 200 and some pe 225 people show up. And I looked around and I was like, wow, no one of these has got a humongous family. And it's like a totally different model. And it's been kind of cool to grow it, but it's just, it's a shift. You've had to make, I had to make a shift to just focus on that. But that's just, uh, I really, that, that's just in the Florida market. I want to say if you're in somewhere else in a high-end market, you may still be doing that family stuff. But as a second home market here, that is what it is here. Well, and that's key, right? You know, it, it's identifying the market you're in and recognizing that, you know, not every market's going to be different, that every market is unique, just like every person's unique. Uh, but there's something to be said, like what you said, which is really, really important, where we're, we're the sum of the people we spend our time with. You know, and we really are. If you're not spending time uh, and surrounding yourself with the right people, then you're you're ultimately hurting yourself. And that's why you have to be so careful about who you keep close and, and who you work alongside in business. And I think it's part of a lot of what the doc and I believe in is surround yourself, create a space with some fantastic professionals, and you can really reinvent how people do business together uh, because everybody can help lift each other up. And that's ideal, but you're only as strong as the weakest link on a team. Also, Something to be said about that. Sounds a lot like the Entrepreneur yeah. Mastery Lab inside our private Facebook group. Ah. Cheap plug, cheap plug. <laughs> any any surprises, Austin, when you made that shift? Like anything that really stood out to you were like, holy shit, I did not expect this. Yeah, it was, I was trying to find the quote, but I, I, I'll find it. It was like, I found it a couple of days ago. It was a $50,000 client says, I have to wait a week to wire you the money. A half a million dollar client says it's wired. What do I do next? And it's just like that upper tier, there's no, they just want service. That's mm -hmm. why they shop at Ritz Carlton and stay at the Ritz Carlton and go to Saks Fifth Avenue. All those people want a service. And as long as you can give them service, they'll, they're going to love you. Give them some white glove service. That's it's the whole quality and quantity. It's the quality versus quantity aspect here. You know, it's, they want quality, they're buying quality stuff. They want quality service, quantity. You could sell a thousand homes and I, I don't laugh at it and I shouldn't laugh at it, but like my average, the average sales price was 350 and today it's 2 million. So you, it can be done. The average 
a college dropout can do it, you know? Not just do it, but enjoy doing it and having and fun with it. It's fun. It's a ton of fun. All right. So, I mean, so like, <clears throat> go ahead. What were you gonna no, say? it's fine. No, go ahead. It's fine. I, I was going to ask, what, what's, what's the greatest, most big thing you've done for somebody from a service perspective? What, what have you done to like just shoot the roof off the house, like just to make somebody go, holy crap, this guy's incredible? Back, I did a lot of things. Back, well, I'll just give you a couple <laughs> stories. You want two? I'll give you two stories. All right, guys. Right, so I'm a gym rat. So this kid named Evan was in the gym wanting to lift, but he was born without his left arm. So a couple of days later, I see him in there with a prosthetic arm and it was made just for weightlifting. He goes, uh, it costs 16,000 bucks. My insurance won't cover it. So I said, you come here at four o'clock in the morning with me because that's when I work out and I will post it all over social media and I'll match dollar for dollar and we'll raise the 16,000 bucks. We had to turn it off within an hour. We raised that money just like that for his prosthetic arm. So now he can lift weights with an arm that is made for weightlifting. Wow. That's freaking awesome. Number two, I had a child, I had a family that I was helping back in Richmond and their daughter was in a wheelchair, a mobilized wheelchair. And I had to help take this movable wheelchair out of the mom's van and help get it up and down, up and down, up and down. And then they ended up buying this house that did not have a wheelchair ramp. And I asked her what she was doing. And she said, we're just gonna use the movable one from the van to get the girl in the house. Well, my uncle happens to own Deck Tech, which is the, one of the largest deck company companies in Richmond. So we did our final walkthrough on the house. I had them drop off the deck package and they started building the ramp on the front of the house. By the time we came back from the, from closing, the, the ramp was being started to be finished and we gave them a wheelchair ramp for closing. Oh, That's I got one more. Incredible, man. This one's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Those others weren't pretty good. I mean, come on, oh, no. that's incredible. It, this one's pretty good. All right, so uh, I'm sitting in BNI, which is Business Networking International, and there's a lady in there, and she came in there to ask for three thousand dollars for Christmas gifts for a rundown trailer park in Richmond, Virginia. And I said I would give her the three thousand dollars, and then I started listening that they didn't have anything. These guys were in rundown trailers, no electricity, cooking off grills outside of their trailers. So I opened up our office to a toy drive and holy Batman stuff came from all over the world. We ended up having a tractor trailer, police escort, Santa Claus and grills, everything on the uh, Christmas Eve that we delivered 2017. And that was probably the coolest one. The news was there. Everybody was there. And I'm like, I cannot believe this went from somebody asking me for 3000 bucks to this. They just got whatever the heck they needed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something here. I, I, I want all our audience to listen in real carefully here because Austin's entire conversation was this shift from volume to higher end because the focus is on service. And yet, I, I, what two out of three of these stories were when you were in the volume world. So you have been giving the service, man. You have been going above and beyond to create success in your business, whether you're in the volume market or the higher end market here, here in South Florida. I, there's a real lesson there for people to take from. You got to give back. You got to provide the best possible customer service. You do that, uh, you will you will achieve success in business always. People talk about you. You satisfy one person, they're going to tell their best people. If you piss somebody off, they're going to get on a megaphone. But <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you give customer service, white glove service. And my saying is, can you put your name to that? When I and When I mean selling authentically, I can close my eyes at night now and say i did the best i could do today yeah that, that's awesome man i i absolutely love that talk to us a little bit you just launched a book share, share with us a little bit about that if you don't mind so this was my covid project it is called you the real state of life and it's pretty much my story uh just how my my i, I was massively successful at a young age married to children, everything is going amazing. And then I, uh, I didn't make a mistake. I had a full blown affair that I flat out told her about. And uh, without me knowing, she ended up having all my real estate holdings appraised, the company appraised, and I was forced out of it and fired in 2017. And <laughs> if I look back on it now, what, what I went through then, and there was some deep, dark issues when I first got here. 
And I, I had a chance to reset my life. So I came to South Florida and who else would rather reset their life down here where it's sunny all the time. And if you, you're going to, if you're gay, this is the place to be. It's the best freaking place in the world. Um, but you just got to be comfortable with who you are. And if you are in a job that you don't like or a relationship you don't like or uh, dating somebody or even your finances, you know, the, that's the reason why I wrote this book. Once I got out of that massive state of depression, I was just like, you know, wow, there's so many other people in this world that have got these issues that if I wrote this book and flat out told my story, maybe they'd be like, there's a way to get around all this because I had everything, lost it all, and I'm on my way back up to building it all over again. But if I could tell anybody to do anything, you've got you've to let go of things. People are going to do things to you that are not always nice, especially in business. You know, there's a lot of jealousy out there. There's a lot of vindictive people out there and you got to wish them well, let them go and move on and focus on you. It's pretty powerful. Uh, you know, it, it, there's an interesting pattern you see with, with people who are successful. And I think you see this quite often. Um, you can become very successful and you can really, you can end up not having it, right? Whether it's, it's taken from you or you, you lose it, regardless, you can go from the top all the way back down to the bottom in a sense. Uh, but a lot of those same people are able to kind of get right back up to, to the top. And, you know, that's, that's a little bit of the story about you. And it, it, I think it's because you have some of those characteristics and you understand that, that idea of, hey, you can't, you can't maybe take things personally. You've got to let the past be the past. Uh, and live a little bit more in the present because it's very easy to get caught up in the past or look forward into the future uh, and ignore what's right in front of you. Uh, so I think there's something to be said about that. It's pretty powerful. It will just drag you down and it'll continue to drag you down. And the way I looked at it was I'm a pilot and I kept saying to myself, I've got to get rid of this dead weight or this plane is never going to take off. But I, I do want to take a, a break for our sponsors for a moment and we'll be back in just a minute. Hey y'all, it's the doctor from JB and the doctor. Just wanted to talk quickly about our two-on-one coaching service that we offer, as well as our group coaching program that's also available. As high-performance coaches for service-based professionals and entrepreneurs, we are hyper-focused on improving your presentation and positioning, powering up your productivity, and supercharging your sales. As we all know, people, we're just different, and one size does not fit all. So it's important to work with those that understand this and can tailor their program and training specific to your needs. And that is exactly what we do here at JB and the Doctor. With our Mastery with Science system and approach, we provide both the how and the why, proven by experience and backed by science. So to take advantage of this truly unique approach with the expertise of two coaches, providing you with the very best of self and business coaching, just check out our website at jbandthedoctor.com slash services for more information or to schedule an exploratory phone call. That's jbandthedoctor.com slash services. I've heard a lot from this thing. And I, we always talk about the synergy that comes through these podcasts, how JB and I always, when we reflect back, is how our message, it gives us some credence that we're doing the right thing, that we're on the right path ourselves. And what we're trying to deliver in each guest, we kind of get more and more confirmation of that. Because what I'm hearing, and as most of our listeners know, we're a big proponent of the be rich mindset. And be rich really has nothing to do with money. And it's interesting, like through this conversation, money's come up quite a bit because it is important to the business world. But that's not really when we hear rich, what we're talking about. And I'm not hearing you say the same things. Because when we talk about be rich, it's rise to mastery, inspire greatness, celebrate knowledge, and help others along the way. And that's a lot of what I heard through your story. And while it's driven by success and, and profit and money and, and business and, and that success world, all your stories came back to all those other core values that we were just talking about. The same as the Be Rich Mindset, the helping others, inspiring greatness, celebrating that knowledge and, and mastering what you're doing. I think so. Um, I love to hear that synergy and getting that, that further uh for the world that we're all connected in some way and that we're all on the right path if we if you just keep doing those things. I mean, once the way I saw it is once you focused on you, I learned who I was. I could sell authentically and money will follow. I mean, you can't be focused on it, but if you do right by everybody, money will follow. Yeah, so it's, it's a result, 
right? It, it, my, my money is, or I should say, a byproduct of, of what you're trying to accomplish, right? It, my, money is not the goal. The money comes, you know, if, if you can, if you can add the service, be the service, create the value, if you can do all those things, if you can be more than just an order taker, which I think most, most people are, you know, the difference between a professional and everybody else, most people, it's just, they're just order takers. They're, they're competent, right? They can do it. Hey, yeah, I can, I can put your house on the MLS and I can, you know, effectively, you know, sign off on a contract and put an addendum in when I need to, or, you know, change order or whatever it happens to be. And, and we can close on the business. Most people are capable of that, uh, but that's not what a professional is. A professional brings it to the next level. That's just the very base of the pyramid, right? There's a whole value pyramid on top of that. And, and I think, you know, really believing in what you do and the services you offer and the value that you add uh, and, and becoming more of a, a partner with people and somebody that guides somebody and, and walks side by side with them through, through the entire process, whatever that process is, whatever business you're in, that, that's where you see the difference in professionals. So it's, and, and then the money comes. That's where you see the true success with money. It's not about the money. The money just comes from all that. I've always done, and I call them unexpected extras. And when you're in a transaction, just do something extra for somebody and they appreciate it, you know, and it could be the smallest thing. I mean, I, I had a guy just fly in this weekend to buy a property and I ended up taking him to the gym with me. He didn't see that out of the way. I mean, I saw that he was a workout dude when I saw him and I was like, do you just want to, instead of a hotel gym, I remember over here and he went with me and loved it. And it's just one of those like, unexpected extras. Yeah. It makes, makes a huge difference. Uh, Pete, the bar is low, right? People <laughs> listening, the bar is low. <laughs> you know, here in Florida, you know, you know the bar is low because if you call somebody back, they're surprised, right? Well, you called me back that's and you're prompt about it. And you're like, really, that's the bar? But so so the bar is low. So to come in with, I, and I love that, by the way. I love, even though the phrasing that, unexpected extra, right? Just, just do something that somebody else wouldn't do. And it does... You know, we talk about this all the time. You know, it's not big things. You don't need to do big things for people. Yes, the big things are great stories and, and they're, they're incredible and people will always appreciate it. But it's really the tiny things consistently over time with a lot of people that will make the biggest difference in your business. Just tiny little things. That's a great one. It's pretty neat. What happens, Doc, when we, when we do that? Like the, when, we, when we have that experience with somebody. About the giving or going the extra well, mile? Just, you know, the, 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 the tiny little extra things that people don't expect. I, I, I mean, I think you were saying it earlier when you're talking about like the surprise of people getting callbacks, I get surprised every day in my business. Like somebody, Oh, you call me back. Thank you. Or if I just say, Hey, I can't do that, but I know a person that can here, try this person. Um, just those little things stick out so much that uh, it's because most people are conditioned that no one wants to do anything for them, that they're out to get them. Because uh, that's part of our, our natural defense system, right? We have to be on on edge that uh, it's our self-protection, right? That fear, flight, um, anxiety all comes from that. And we're conditioned so much, especially in this society today, that people are trying, they're out to get you. They're out to scam you. They're out to get your information. They're out to steal whatever good thing you're doing. Um, so when people are like us oh, share these ideas for free, they come on and, I mean, Austin just pretty much told everything he was doing. Anyone can copy that. Um, because he knows that there's enough to go around. And once you can get out of that scarcity mindset and switch it around, that's what people are not used to. And when you do it, it really stands out. It sets, up, sets them apart. That's pretty awesome. Austin, where, well where, where, where do you see the future, man? Where, where, where do you see the world opening up to you going forward? Are you going to make any changes? Just continue building what you got? Where, where are you going with this? I would like to get on stage and start talking to companies about my entire story because there's a lot of people sitting in that audience that are bringing crazy to work with them. And if they can get rid of crazy at home, then they can produce and perform a hell of a lot better. And Andre's some... laughing right now because he's he knows that's true. <laughs> if you're serious about that, I have somebody I can introduce you to that actually facilitates doing that. So I'm happy to make an introduction. I think you guys get along fantastic. And this book was just a start. And that's the reason why I wrote it. Cause I realized, holy crap, there's so many other people out there with these same issues that they're just hiding and afraid to say anything or do anything about it. But once you can be you, it's amazing. I could also right now see the, the be you and the be rich uh, co-sponsored event where we're both all kind of putting a nice like event together and, and taking over the world that way. 
I don't like money. If you want my honest opinion, I've always hated it because the more I've had, the more problems I've had. Yeah. You know, it's just who's breaking out to the biggie. It's stupid. It's it's <laughs> honestly stupid. It's a stupid vehicle of life. Who's breaking out to the biggie song? Won't want any more problems. <laughs> It's, it's awesome but you, you, you hit on something there Austin and, and you know I think I think it's good for me a kind of good, good stopping point here you know the challenges we deal with we we all we, we all deal with the same things right in some way shape or form no matter how it it shows up in our lives we all have and share the same struggles we all go through the same human experience and that's where we can all learn from this type of conversation it's why it's so powerful uh, and so so I hope our audience really is who, who's listening in on this, you know, kind of recognizes um, you might not be living the same life as Austin, but there, there is enough commonality there always that you can take some of what you heard here and apply it into your own life and make yourself better. And we just take one nugget from today to make yourself better with. It was a big win and a big, a great podcast. Small steps and get the book. Where's a good place for us to get that book, Austin? You can go to Amazon, just type in you, the real state of life or just go to my website, austinbergman.com and click away. Or just go down below into the show notes and we'll have it all linked. Are they there? As this is not live, right? Not as no. far as anyone else no. knows. Right. <laughs> well, I'm, just doing, I'm doing a book signing in Wilton, so forget it. <laughs> Pay attention to austinbergman.com to find out for all the future book signings that may be happening. Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have more than one. Austin, thanks again for joining us, man. Loved having you on here. Congratulations on all the continued success and uh, on really, you know, finding yourself and owning it. It's awesome. Congratulations to you guys on this podcast. It was fun. Good times, my man. See you soon. So yeah, every week, Doc, we talk to totally different personalities. And if you listen to this podcast for any period of time, you're like, wow, that is a totally different conversation than you had the week before and a totally different conversation than you had the week after. But there's always at least a couple of really solid takeaways. Uh, my favorite thing from this conversation, we had a lot with Austin, but my favorite thing was just, uh, he, he coined it, the unexpected extras and delivering that, that, that service that people just aren't expecting and the difference it makes when you surprise somebody positively. Oh yeah. I mean, if you've ever done any work with us, you realize that we're a big fan of that also um, deliver more than is expected. And it's, it's what remember, cause it's those little things. Uh, as we're getting to the holidays, we talked a little bit about it with gifts um, before, right? Like, and I said, I'm much rather give something to somebody that I know that they like, no matter what time of the year it is, than focus on just a holiday where I'm supposed to give a, a gift because they're supposed to right um, and i think those same things because you're doing it because you want to not because you have to i mean usually when you're doing those unexpected extras it's after the deal's done it's you know the money's there already like you, there's no reason to do it other than you want to give that extra level and that's i think why it stands out so much so small things make a huge difference and our experience with people. And what I, what I love about the surprise more than anything, Doc, what I love about that giving a little extra is, is I say this all the time, you know, people who work with me hear this all the time. Uh, we, we have limited shelf space up here, right? The room we have on the shelves up here is pretty limited. So how do we keep somebody top of mind? How does somebody stick up here? Because it's not easy. Probably is on the podcast that can't see him pointing to his head. He's pointing yeah, to his head. I, I probably should have mentioned that but yes i am pointing to my head and i'm holding my head mental shelf space you know think of it like i've got a shelf on a wall only so much can fit on there and that's the people in our lives you can only you can only remember to think of so many people at any given time and so if you actually want to stick and be cemented onto that shelf things like the unexpected little extras are going to be what make you stick it's the little extras it's a little extra difference because that will last a long time. Doesn't need to be big, doesn't need to be grandiose. We don't need to change somebody's world forever, although that's fantastic if you can do that. But those tiny little things are gonna go an incredibly long way to build raving fans. Another takeaway is when we were, we were talking about the real estate world and obviously the shift into the, the higher end. Um, but I think those lessons that Austin were giving, because I would imagine there's plenty of realtors I know, uh, that aren't interested or 
don't have the energy, the same level to do those multi, multi million dollar pro- projects, right? They're the ones that are selling the family homes, the ones that Austin talked about he was doing earlier in his career. But those same lessons still apply. Doing those same things still apply. It doesn't matter what level you're trying to achieve. Um, we're all different. We're all, we all have different focuses of what we want. And your goal might be just to be the best, you know, $200,000 home seller. If you can find one of those in Florida, let me know. Uh, seller, but if that's your goal, just do that the best you can using those same strategies. It doesn't matter what your what level you're at; those strategies play. We are all unique, and we all want different things in life, but we can all take some of these lessons and become a little bit better at it. I absolutely agree, Doc. Uh, so, hey, you can you can find Austin in the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab as a member. You can hit him up there. Obviously, all his details are in our show notes. And you can find us on all of your social media platforms, can't they, Doc? You can find us there at JB and the Doctor, or you can find us on our website at jbandthedoctor.com. And again, if you have not subscribed, followed, liked, or given us a five-star review, please do. We rely on you to give us the platform, and I'm using hand motions right now, the platform to continue to do this and have great conversations with professionals and and give you just a little bit of better insight into how you can get better at what you do and achieve the results you want to achieve. So like, subscribe, follow, review. We appreciate you. Thank you. And as we're going into the end of the year, we have some good surprises coming up on the podcast to close out the year. So look forward to that. We are excited. It will be fun. All right, Doc. JB out. Peace out, yo.